I am the Commissar. That's my name. Forged Alliance Forever. That's the game. Who have we got with a claim to fame? Today, it's a ladder game, so the hot team will be facing the cold team. There are three players apiece today, and so that means it's a generated map. For each team, we have the causeway position, the island position, and the peninsula position. In the causeway position for hot team, we have War Daddy, 983 rated, UEF in orange. In the island position for hot team, we have Bream, 895 rated, UEF in burgundy. And last but not least, in the peninsula position for hot team, we have Chubbin Lovin, who is 1110 rated, Seraphim in red. And their mirrors on the cold team. Starting first in the causeway position, we have Kandaker. He's 902 rated, he's Cybran in mauve. Next to him, on the island, we have Teacop, 775 rated, also Cybran in dark blue. And last but not least, here on the peninsula, we have RLO, 1303 rated, also Cybran in light blue. So we have an all Cybran team facing off against two UEFs and a Serra. Quick look at the map. So, one interesting thing about the island position is that it's actually navally safe. You can't get to it by navy from either side. And I expect the island players to be taking the arrows, whereas I expect the peninsula and causeway players to be fighting it out across the land, especially as all the tasty stuff is up each side and there's nothing really in the middle. Looking at reclaim, there's a big patch for each peninsula and each causeway player but nothing really to fight over in the middle reclaim wise. So that could be quite a static sort of game. We have the early raid that you might expect in these situations coming out from RLO. One creepy crawly insect, a mantis and one scout. Not much early aggression elsewhere. There's a tank coming out from Chubbin but that feels like just the beginning of his spam rather than a raid as it's unsupported by a uh, scout and rather later. I was about to say lab but of course several labs and several scouts are the same thing. RLO choosing to stay in his base though whereas all three of the other forward commanders are choosing to come forward and head for the middle. So that might give War Daddy an advantage in any early fights that take place over here. And it looks like War Daddy has chosen to go for Navy in the top pond once he's finished cleaning up this little bit of reclaim. I don't think anybody else has chosen to queue up Navy yet. This engineer looks like it might be, but look at this. That's actually going on a sneaky little run to put up sonar and radar to be able to get eyes on the enemy. If you can manage that and not be caught, that could be quite a good little ploy for the cold team. So I do like this navy ploy, it would be good for shutting stuff down around here, but thanks to this causeway over here, War Daddy might have a problem getting anything aggressive done. UEF cruisers might be able to range from here to RLO's base, but I'm not certain of that. The map is 12.5k, so that's a reasonable distance. And RLO sends another sneaky little raid across here. The first one ran into War Daddy's com, and this one runs into Chubbin's spam. So, no super successful raiding from RLO just yet. That NG continues on its path trying to get stuff sneakily positioned over here. 
Especially as he's going for Solar, you would have thought that Kandaker might be going for a bit of Navy here. And given that his team has now seen Chubbin advance into here, this would be a marvellous place to put a destroyer, or perhaps... Maybe this would be a good place to put a destroyer, because, you know, they're Cybrans. They can walk. RLO has chosen to come forward to support his spam, but he's got a bit more spam up front than War Daddy, who's got four factories in his base, and they are producing. Whereas RLO has paused his while he gets some eco done, but as of right now, RLO has more spam. This radar is nice, it will help him spot any boats that choose to come this way sneaking around and looks like we're going straight for T2 unsurprisingly followed by a queue of cruisers for War Daddy. That's back, we'll deal with that in a little moment. RLO's com comes pushing in and he's easily going to clear up that small amount of spam. All comes naked as yet, though Kandaker has started on the gun upgrade. That's the first upgrade that we've seen. But Arlo pushing in on War Daddy. The comms are duking it out one on one, mano a mano, naked and unashamed. But the spam is quickly brought in. And Arlo still has the more. That's also a decent force coming across from Kandika, trying to either get in to cut off War Daddy perhaps, or sneak in and do some damage. Uh, let him run by and more of a run through, but Chubbin, who is calm, is rooted to the spot as he tries to get the speed and range upgrade. Has a decent horde of spam and he sends it back to try and stop the run through. He might get this Hydro and this Radar, and he might get a couple of Mexes here, because Chubbin has stopped and feels forced to bring it back. He's finished the gun a lot more quickly than Kandaker has, and so he's ready to rumble. So the Hydro's gone down, the Radar's gone down, but there's enough spam coming from War Daddy that he'll probably stop the rest before too much gets done. Maybe one more Mex? Teacop and Chubbin both going for T2 and Teacop's brought his come forward to support the fight in the middle while Bream has chosen to stay back at base. More Intel devices going up as another engineer puts radars here. This engineer has put radar here and where is it heading now? It's just trying to steal some reclaim. What's this NG doing from Chubbin? I don't know, but it's it's sitting there. Having a little picnic, perhaps. Oh well, he can sit there and enjoy his little hamper with its... I don't know, what do engineers eat on picnics? Little, instead of crackers and cheese, they'll have like crackers and little bits of um, metal and rust and scrap. RLO going for gun, War Daddy's still naked, so it still feels like RLO also has the more spam, so he could have the advantage here. But this is nice, look at this. Chubbin has not noticed what's going on here, and Kandaker is stealing the Ceratec for the use of the Cybran team. Is he going to make it? You know, I think he is. Meanwhile, though, Kandaker is pushing in, and there you go, you see down there, he gets the Ceratec. Chubbin has T2 and gun, and there's also a fight here, so let's go to split screen. So, here, on the left, we have RLO pushing in. This is good positioning, using his com to soak up damage, while keeping his spam closer to the point defense Rick can fall back generally making sure that he's working through War Daddy's stuff without losing too much of his own. Over here on the right, Chubbin is pushing in and he's relying on his gun and T2 to help him survive because that gun comm is just emptying fire into him, but he's having 
to turn now and deal with Chubbin's spam which is swarming around him. He has got a PD to fall back to, but will that be enough because that's a lot of spam from Chubbin and don't forget that Chubbin has the gun as well, but Teacop has brought his com in in order to support and that's going to make the difference maybe and it looks like Chubbin might choose to fall back especially as Teacop can choose to throw up T2 PDs to assist the defence and give Kandeka a safe place to which to retreat. Over here, RLO is deep into the yellow at only 3000 hit points but he's got more spam, he's got a point defence and War Daddy looks like he might actually be in trouble. He's got not much spam, though there's a litter coming up to support. There's this PD here, he has got to worry. He's in the green, so he's not in immediate risk of death, and he's falling back. So is Chubbin, so let's go back to single screen. So, a quick look at technology on each side. We've got T2 land here. Though that looks like it's only just finished, we're only seeing a couple of... T2 units out there doesn't look like we've got anything down here for Kandeka and T2 on his way to T3 for Teacop and it's actually a very similar story over on the other side the Peninsula player Chubbin with T2 land but only a couple of Ilshis out Okay, we've just got T2 here for War Daddy, but only just. I'm not seeing any actual T2 units on the field yet, and this will be looking at in a moment. And we've got T2 on his way to T3 for Bream, so very similar tech story going on here. This feels like courage, perhaps foolhardiness from RLO. He's come forward alone. He is now bringing up spam to support him, and he does have some T2 in there, which, as we pointed out, War Daddy doesn't yet have. But he's still a bit exposed. However, he's opening fire on War Daddy, but War Daddy's opening fire right back, and RLO is already hurt. That said, he has the gun. War Daddy doesn't. Over here, Chubbin is working on Nano. And he's feeling quite safe there because he's got T2 PDs and now a decent little blob of Ilshis to defend himself. And War Daddy might be in trouble. Look at this. That's T2 tanks and a gun com and it's pushing him back. And War Daddy goes down into the red. But he gets a crucial rank of vet. RLO could be pushing but isn't, maybe he's worried about these PDs. And the uh, War Daddy takes another hit and goes down to just 1700 hit points. A shield comes to protect him, RLO doesn't pursue and War Daddy just escapes that little fight. Meanwhile, down here, Teacop, he's going for stealth in addition to his T2. And Kandeka has got stealth and is upgrading it to nano. So a bit more in the way of combat comms going on here. But seeing that close shave that War Daddy just had, Chubbin is bringing not only his Ilshis but also his com across in an effort to cut off RLO. And War Daddy also on the way to that nano. In comes Chubbin. Gun T2 nano, very hard to stop. And he's overcharging his way through these tanks belonging to RLO. But he's actually pulling those Ilshis back. Maybe he saw this posturing by Kandeka. Either way, he feels like his com is enough to do the damage here. And to be fair, it probably is. War Daddy brings up his spam in support. Chubbin on his way to T3 land. But look at this. Remember we said there was potential for sneaky neighbor shenanigans? Well, 
War Daddy has a cruiser out and it's taken out two of the mexes in RLO's home base. So that's very good work by War Daddy. It does range it, and he's got two mixes, both of which I think actually were. The, I think those might have been T2, but then had their like that had their mass destroyed by the cruiser fire. War Daddy definitely chunking his com up. Now he's got both gun and nano, and Kandaker nearly finished his nano. But three mechs is out now here for RLO. That feels pretty bad. And it's only going to get worse as another cruiser from War Daddy is coming to make it up. Meanwhile, War Daddy's spam, now including Mongeese and Shields, and more to the point, including Chubbin's Com, is pushing RLO back. He has T2 spam which is nice, he has T1 point defences to fall back to, but they're not going to last long against a force like this. But look at that overcharge from his comm, look at that huge explosion. And now, Chubbin is all on his own, facing a lot of spam, including T2 from RLO and two Rambo comms. Here, T-Cop trying to get some intel down, but no luck there, the cruiser just blasts it. No more real damage going on here and there are TMDs going up, but we'll have to check back on that in a moment. And meanwhile, while Chubbin is engaged over here, Kandaker comes up with his comm, f with the spam following at a respectful distance, as it should in this sort of situation. And he's eaten away at Chubbin's spam, but that's a lot of Elshies for Chubbin, and that might be enough to swarm down Kandaker if Kandaker doesn't pay close attention. Nice support factories up here from Chubbin. RLO sending a group of tanks to try and counter the cruisers. We'll check back on them to see whether they get anything done. And Kandaker was paying attention. Look at how his spam has supported his comm. I like that move. And Chubbin has lost a few Oshis and falls back a bit. Over here, supported by mobile shields, War Daddy is pushing in again to try and take over these defensive positions that RLO had set up, but t -Cop is building Cerberus back here, and that may be enough to drive War Daddy away. Or it may not be, but in combination with RLO's comm, it probably should be. Now, this cruiser is carefully staying out of range of these tanks, and some of them have come back to help out, but that cruiser, unless it moves, might be in trouble. RLO has rebuilt his mexes at only at T1, but there isn't really much TMD yet, but watch this. Chubbin is being swarmed by Kandaker's spam, and that's quite a lot of spam and a gun nanocom, and sure, Chubbin is gun nano T2, but is that enough? There are Ilshis in there though, and Ilshis are tough, but this could make the difference. There's a broadsword. Dream has got T3 air and more to the point he's got broadswords out and while we do have T3 air from t -Corp and the power production I'm not seeing any ASFs up yet and with the help of that broadsword suddenly what looked like a big force for Kandaker is just Kandaker's com and he gets a good rank of vet there but he's still losing a lot of damage and now it's just the broadsword versus Kandaker and Kandaker doesn't have any flak He's putting up a shield to fall back to, but he needs to be putting up anti-air there. And Kandaker's down into the red, and t -Cop, he's been building torp bombs. He hasn't been building ASFs. He's not ready for this, and that might be Kandaker's demise. It might be his doom. What's he going to do about it, my friends? I will tell you, the answer might just be nothing, because while he's got a couple of inties trying to help out, Dream has more. And now there's a second broadsword in on the party, and boom! That is what he did about it. Nothing. Kandaker has been defeated by Breen, the first player out of the game, just short of 20 minutes. Nasty gunships, sa says Kandaker. And you know, he's not wrong, those gunships are also still out and about, and ready to inflict some damage. 
So now we have two comms and little else defending this side and no comms defending this side so this could be a problem for a code team. Meanwhile the tanks aren't there anymore and you can see that the cruisers killed a decent number of them though a few managed to retreat. I'm assuming that these torps which um, T-Cop has given over to RLO are designed to go and stop the cruisers or perhaps to go and stop any more being produced by taking out this naval yard but if so RLO has not chosen to use them yet. Kandaker points out to RLO who's inherited his stuff that he has captured that Serra NG and has built a factory somewhere there. So they do have Serra Tech as well as being or Cybron, diluting their racial purity if you will. I guess if any of the factions in FAF were to be a bit, you know, racial purity-ish, it would probably be the UEF, maybe, but... Certainly they seem to be a bit racist against the poor old Cybrans, but that discussion of law aside, War Daddy has handed everything over to Chubbin. He says, I have to go and he hands all his stuff over to Chubbin. So now Chubbin has control of quite a decent amount, but while we note how much Chubbin is controlling, look at Bream's Eco. Chubbin has two bases, although his, his own is better managed in terms of Eco than War Daddy's was. But despite having two bases, Bream has 50% more Eco. Look at all those capped T3 mexes in Bream's base and compare it to T-Cop who has only 80 mass per tick whereas RLO sitting on the same number of bases and the same bases as Chubbin has only 122 so Hot Team thanks mainly to Bream is 50 mass ahead which is not at all insignificant. bit more TMD has gone up here and you can see it blocking those couple of cruisers and as yet Chubbin isn't choosing to add any more cruiser based firepower to it. He could send in a few more and attempt to um, attempt to just overwhelm it but I don't know how well that would go for him. Meanwhile T-Corp is less than happy with being one of the last lines of defense against all of this malarkey and so he has fallen back into the water where he is hiding. Dis and I'm not sure whether the, to say despite or because of Bream's focus on eco He's got a pretty good air force. T-Cop has 14 ASFs. Bream has 20, has 14 but 22 inties and they're about to scuffle. But Bream also has 8 gunships and let's have a look at this air fight. Bream's not really losing the ASFs. But T-Cop absolutely is. So that was a good air win for Bream. And now I'd say that air control is definitely in the hands of Hot Team and Bream can use those gunships at will. More TMDs going up all the time. Look at all that TMD to repair the cruiser fire. But do you know what TMD is quite weak to, my friends? It's gunships. And in come the ASFs from T-Cop, but... Dream just responds with more ASFs as well as his Inties, and sure, he is losing a few gunships, but at what cost to T-Cop? T-Cop's ASFs are all massacred, Bream still has ASFs, Bream still has gunships, and they're chewing through here. There's a lot of flak that's quickly being thrown up, and Bream does lose a few gunships, and those top bombs are also just sitting ducks on the ground for dream to eat up with his ASFs and he does and he does meanwhile that T3 land is being put to good use by Chubbin 
these support factories have been upgraded and he's got a wave of Othiums trickling through the water trying to come out and give a nasty surprise to RLO in Kandaker's old base. And this is quite a large army coming in into Arulo's original base, his comms feeling forced to hide in the water. I think that Stealth and Nano would not be a bad call on there because you're going to need every bit of firepower you've got to fight that. And he is putting up Cerberus turrets, a big line of Cerberus turrets, as a last ditch defence. But this feels like very little against this huge shielded force of T2. The sonar has been put up by T-Corp and it's going to see those Othiums and they're probably a little bit scared. Need T3 fighting units, asks Kandaker. Yes, says RLO. And you know, he's not joking, but where's he going to get him from? He, there is this T3 HQ here and it is producing bricks, but it's going to be a long walk to get those bricks to where they're need needed. Although now, where they're needed is right here, but again. T2PD is proving the defense of choice for the code team and those Othiums feel like they're just trickling a little bit too much. Uh, if they'd come in in formation they could perhaps have come across here and then swarmed up from the bottom taking them out as close to one at a time as possible but now I think that that's off the menu until there are a lot more Othiums messing around. Now two interesting things to note here. One Chubbin is back on producing cruisers and hoping to overwhelm this base. Two, you'll remember that ward that he said he was going. Well, he left a long walk order for his comm and look where that comm is headed. It's just walking straight into Teacop's base. And are they going to notice it? Do they know about it right now? Let's find out. They have not a clue. That War Daddy's comm is just pootling across there slowly and about to cause them some nasty surprises. If you go down to the little island today, you're in for a big surprise. Though whether or not I would describe Code Team as teddy bears having a picnic, which War Daddy is about to crash, I couldn't say. Out of all the races, I think the UEF have most teddy bear-like comms. What do you think? Tell me in the comments below. And while you're down there, tell me who you think is going to win. The Ecos are actually back to reasonably balanced, although Hot Team still have a slight lead. But Hot Team's map control is looking pretty great. And this doesn't look too, well, hot for Code Team either, as Othium sneak up and get a bit of damage done and pincering this firebase looks like the front line here is going to advance so it's right here and of course as if that wasn't enough there are more and more cruisers being added all the time but the cybrans are rejecting humanity as we know from the law and returning to monkey we have the first monkey lord of the first experimenter in this game out from rlo and forward it stomps Having crushed this firebase and taken out a couple of mexes, this army is now moving across and it looks like Chubbin is massing for a big push on the base of RLO, but T-Cop is defending and he's defending with strats. He hasn't activated the stealth, which I think would be a good idea, because as we know, the hot team has air superiority and these ASFs can just come in and kill the strats unless... Teacop is very careful, but Teacop actually, to be fair, he is pretty careful, and all those strats get out of there. And if he takes the air fight now, he'll be doing so over a lot of flak from RLO, and I wouldn't advise that. Bream agrees, and he falls back with his ASFs, so he's choosing not to take that air fight. But meanwhile, War Daddy's autopiloting com pops out of the water, and Teacop sends the strats in on it, but whether by luck or judgment, he's going to stand right on top of this ion plant and look at that, the strat catches the ion plant and is doing as much damage. Boom! War Daddy, on autopilot, 
goes up in flames but he does so right in teacup's base and it takes out one of the ion reactors and almost takes out another that was pretty painful for poor old teacup and not to be outdone by this monkey not that I think they know about it yet because of course it has got stealth and there haven't been any flyovers recently Chubbin is starting a chicken up here and where Hot Team once had the eco lead Arvalo especially has really been boosting up that eco behind the scenes and now it is Coa Team not Hot Team who have a 50 eco lead Meanwhile, the monkey is trying a different attack and using its stealth to try and sneak round here. While it does, though, speaking of ecos, let's have a quick look at what the players have in their metaphorical pockets. So here we are looking at RLO, and this is very good. It's almost too good. Having that much mass unspent, and did I just see some overflow coming in there? Having that much mass unspent means you're wasting it and any extra you get will be wasted. So that that is something to be avoided, but I guess it's better than having no mass at all. And given what we just saw, it's my guess that Teacup as well... Yes, he is. He was very close to the top and must have been overflowing. So if anything, the Code team have too much mass, more mass than they know what to do with. How does that compare to the Hot team? Bream is looking perfectly balanced. Look at that, just a little bit of mass in the bank. Not too low, not too much. A small but not insignificant power overflow so he can do things he needs to with overcharge and so forth. That's perfect. And Chubbin, well Chubbin is spending quite a lot more than he's making and I know a lot of it is going on this chicken, but it's possible, especially with two bases, that he does need to focus on his eco a little bit more. Back to the overview. Now, one thing that the eagle-eyed among you might have noticed while we were messing around in player views there was this notification. Bream has built a nuke and I don't think they haven't scouted much at all. The code team do not know about it. Well, they're scouting now, but it may be too little too late because that nuke is already getting loaded and I see not a single SMD in any of Cold Team's bases. So that could be super dangerous. They've seen an ACU here, but they haven't scouted any further. They've been shot down by ASFs, and so they haven't seen the nuke. And Chubbin's got his chicken up. Meanwhile second monkey for RLO, this one going just straight in and there's a mega being built to follow it while our sneaky little reach round the side monkey is already well into the water and heading up towards Chubbin's base. Even without this spam though, chicken beats monkey so unless RLO can be very clever. This monkey is a lost cause and he has got a few bricks back here with some AA support but they're not supporting the monkey and that's where they need to be and Chubbin has seen Sneaky Monkey and is presumably well he's instructing Bream to go after it with gunships which is the correct response. However there's not much time before it gets back into the water here and so Bream might have trouble reacting to it in time. Is it? Yeah, look at that. That monkey is deep under the water and can't be gunshipped right now. So Chubbin will need to fall back a bit or risk his com being killed by the monkey and he does indeed fall back. This monkey is just hiding in the water. It can't come out because it will just die to the chicken. If it comes out here, this spam has a fair chance of mobbing it down, but we need to be watching here where Sneaky Monkey is coming out of the water 
and getting stuck into Chubbin's face. Chubbin is desperately pinging those gunships. What are you doing, he says. What indeed is Bream doing? Well, I'll tell you, he isn't defending Chubbin's base against this monkey. Now he is, and that's a decent number of gunships. And <laughs> as Chubbin smashes at the keyboard in rage, the gunships do come in, and they are eating their way pretty quickly through the monkey. It's down to the yellow. But will it escape? Will it make it into the water and start firing torpedoes at Chubbin before... No, it turns. And this is bad monkey management from RLO. He could have just got it into the water. And there goes the nuke. Boom. Down goes the monkey. I feel that was a loss that was rather unnecessary for RLO. Thanks for nothing, yells Chubbin. But perhaps you will have something to thank Bream for, as this nuke is heading straight for Teacop space, and I don't believe there's anything in there to stop it. Huh, says Arlo. Implying he didn't think of that possibility. Well, now he has to think of that possibility. Kaboom! Down goes Teacop's base in a blast of nuclear fire. And there isn't even an SMD started over here. Nor there is an SMD started over here, but it's not loaded. How close is Bream to being loaded again? Well, he's already well on the way to being close, and he is wisely putting up Ravager defense should a monkey try to pop out of the water here. And he's now massing torp bombers. He must know that the comms are in the water. And he's probably going for a snipe. He also has this big heap of gunships. And now that he's literally nuked the air grid of the coal team, he can build gunships and torp bombers at will without worrying about an air response. Although, of course, there are quite a lot of flak tanks pooling around now. This chicken is in the water. During all of that, has it fought and killed that monkey? Where's the other monkey gone? Do you see it's wreck? Because I don't. No, it, it, yes. No, it's back here. This monkey has retreated all the way back here. And it's getting ready to defend against this vast horde of Othiums and the chicken getting ready to walk out of the water. And sure, there are lots of point defences here, like lots of point defences and the monkey are. But this might make the difference. This mega and this monkey is about to finish. Is huge teeth for Yami and chicken still coming? asks Kandeka. And yes, my word, yes it is. And as if that weren't enough, this horde of reclaim engines has found itself on the wrong end of another chicken with a much slightly smaller chunk of spam to back it up. Now, I feel that this force here could have done some good pushing in, but Chubbin hasn't chosen to do that. And to be fair, He's got a lot to worry about. He's got to rebuild his base, which his comm is presently working on. And he's got to micro this force, which is preparing to pop out of the water and get down and dirty in Candace's old base. But there are now, as well as all those point defences, several bricks, a mega and two monkeys in wait. And that might just be enough to stop this attack force. And as if that weren't enough, that chicken's head is poking out of the water and the strat from Teacop, which has survived the nuke here, is able to defend. So, in comes the chicken, and we, at the same time, we get another nuke out from Green. So, let's keep an eye on the nuke on the minimap as we see how this fight goes down. And immediately, immediately, the chicken is utterly smashed by this entire force of experimenters, bricks, point defenses, everything, and the Othiums just run away back into the water. And so we're able to concentrate on this nuke heading on its way across here. And I don't see any SMD there. So where those tactical missiles have failed, this nuke will not. Kaboom! What's he gonna do about that, my dudes? The answer is, lose a lot of eco. And let's have a quick look at the ecos now. I'm surprised by how much they still have left, but Hot Team is now 150 eco, that's 50% ahead, 450 to 300. Bream is obviously very worried about sneaky monkeys coming in, because as well as those banks of ravages, or I guess tele-ACUs, 
Though, if I were defending against Teddy, I would be going for T1 PDs rather than T3. So, as well as the shield, he's got T3 on his com for a pretty hefty com, and he's got a big bank of Ravagers. And he's literally doubling down on the nukes. He's got double nukes. He's built a second. This big wave of spam, now with another chicken to go with it, which I think was the one from over here that's walked across. It feels a bit superfluous to send it in here, because, you know, that base was just nuked. But, it could be pushing here, and sure, there are two monkeys in the Mega, but that's a lot of spam. And this SMD is now loaded, so a third nuke won't hit if it's aimed here. Might hit and take Teacup out if it were aimed back here, though. And Teacup sends a Stratton to try and take this out. Bream doesn't respond, and there's remarkably little flak in this mix. So that Strat might get a little bit of work done. And it has actually got a veterancy. Last push, shouts out Chubbin. I think he's hoping that this lot, plus this second chicken and this lot, will be enough to crack Arlo's front line. Especially if he distracts with these fellows. But that is a lot to take on. Three monkeys now and a mega. I wasn't joking when I said return to monkey. And the monkey factory is continuing. There's another monkey here just heading forward and two more queued up. But Bream is preferring the standoff tactics as well as the two nukes. He's just started work on Tech 3 artillery. He's building a duke back here. But it looks like it might be the Cybrans who are choosing to push first. The monkeys advance, the mega advances, and the spam moves around it, and this monkey is trying to catch up. But three monkeys plus a mega, or in fact four monkeys, should be enough to make anyone think twice about pushing. But that's an awful lot of gunships I see there ready to fight back. But of course, that's an awful lot of flak we can see on the ground ready to support the push, though this really needs to come up and be in position to actually support the experimentals. The strats are bombing the ground where these Othiums are hiding under the water, and I think that might be the wrong call, because that's just showing the strat and rendering it vulnerable to these inties, while these things are deep enough underwater, these Othiums, that they're not really going to get hurt. A fifth monkey joins the fray. So we're definitely in a bit of a standoff, but if we're in a standoff, I will tell you who can't afford to maintain it. It's the cold team. Because now, hot team have literally twice their eco. 500 compared to 230. The experimenters creep forward. My money is on the cyber and force here though, because the Mega can probably take at least one if not both chickens by itself, and in combination with the horde of monkeys, those chickens don't stand a chance, especially if they're moving in close together like that, where the Iron Storm damage from one will prop the other pretty hard. Though those monkeys do want to move away if they don't want to lose, well immediately one of them dies straight up to the Iron Storm. And in come the gunships. They're hovering over the Iron Storm, but they're working their way through the monkeys. So, two chickens dead, but three monkeys down. And the gunships see this big horde of flak and these bouncers, and they choose to back away. Again, in comes the strap, but now there's T3 anti-air in the mix for Hot Team 2, and the strap just dies. And that is a good 
not quite defensive nuke, but nuke not aimed to base. But this is a great split from RLO. Look at that. He's predicted perfectly where the nuke's coming. And I don't think it's going to hit much. That one had 92.6 mass killed. I mean, it's not going to be stopped, but none of the XPs are where it's going to land. The Mega is clearing up the Othiums, and this nuke just lands and hits, well, basically nothing. 92.6 up to 95.6, so it killed 3,000 mass with that hit, which is not to be sniffed at, but still. It's not really significant compared to the amount of army that was there. However, all the AA has split to this side, and so the gunships from Bream come in on this side, and they are getting work done, no question about it. They could focus this monkey down in a blink if they wanted to. But Chubbin is pushing again, and the Mega is all its own now, and could be swarmed. It's already on half damage, and it hasn't focused the chicken yet. Now it focuses the chicken. There are shields to protect the chicken. Okay, now we're getting a full-on engage again. Well, the AA have been brought over here, and these gunships have landed. That might be a mistake from Green, but all eyes really need to be here. The chicken goes down, but the spam swarms in around the Cybran XPs. Come on with the gunships, roars Chubbin. He hasn't been happy with how Bream has been handling his role as an air player, because while Bream does have the units, he hasn't really had the micro, and that would be why he's been focusing on macro. His T3 Arty, his Duke, is up and functional. And as two more monkeys die to the combined forces of Bream's monkeys and Chubbin's spam, leaving only this Mega, although two more monkeys have in the meantime been built, and caught up. I, I promised monkeys, didn't I? Here they are. Teacop is in the middle of the telly upgrade, though he's temporarily paused it. It's a telly of desperation, not of strength. That We can see that from a quick glance at the map, but it might yet pay off. We know that Dream has been trying to fortify himself against such things, and he can easily run to the water. But Chubbin is in less of a good position to defend himself from a sneaky Terry and might easily lose his life if Teacop gets that upgrade and Chubbin doesn't pay attention. And look at all those dead monkeys. Where's the there are engineers there for code team and with what's that? 40, 50, 60, 70, 80,000 mass there to eat, give or take? I thought he'd already started the telly. What was paused then? Didn't I see that notification a bit earlier? Huh. Chubbin, meanwhile, is laying down the salt on Bream. In public chat, I might add. He's, um... Presumably hoping that telling the enemy what Bream is or isn't doing will encourage him to act. And this chicken is about to be denied by the two monkeys. And Bream's gunships will be able to stop the monkeys, but not before they've denied and killed the chicken. Was it built enough to trigger the Ion Storm? No, it was not. Down goes one monkey. And the other's taking damage, but that's a lot of AA, and Bream may be forced to retreat his gunships before he kills the second. Meanwhile, let's have a look at where that Duke is firing. It is stopping its shots right into Kandika's old base and these would be lovely targets to pick off. It's already done some work here because look at, ooh, look at that. Two um, power plants, two T3 pigeons into the red, make that one dead and a couple more hits and RLO could be in quite a bit of power related trouble. Like that one. quick look to see whether Arlo is actually power stored. Actually, I don't think he is because he's still producing about as much mass as you'd expect from that. And Teacop is having difficulty getting the power for his teleporter. He's only got T2 production, so he's just throwing up T2 pgen after T2 pgen. And certainly Arlo will be overflowing a lot less oof partially built monkey taken out as the engineers working on this monkey 
are forced to quickly try and throw up T3 power to fill the hole left by these popped pigeons. Make only gunships, orders Chubbin. And you know, he's got a point. But seems like Bream is more interested in making nukes as another one goes up and it heads back here and do you see what I see my loyal viewers that is the wreck of an SMD so what's our logo gonna do about that nuke nothing that nuke is about to smash what litter is left of poor old RLO's economy and he's gonna have to rely on these couple of pigeons out here and this admittedly vast amount of reclaim up here oof look at this a duke show prepares the way, as it were, announcing the fall of the nuke as it smashes into Arlo's base. I can't defend you, yells Chubbin, as this force advances, including two monkeys from Arlo, but I think that Bream still has enough gunships with which to defend himself. Huh. Teacup cancelled the teleporter, built the laser while he was working on these pigeons, and now has started the teleporter again. So he's now got laser and T2. It's a slow process when your base has been nuked to be able to build expensive upgrades like the teleporter. And look at that eco. Is that like literally 20 times for a moment there, the eco? Still like 10 times give or take. That is brutal. Ten times the eco and to use that phrase yet again, what can co team possibly do about it? Well, the answer has to lie with these four monkeys and a mega because that's a vast amount of firepower. If we go in and briefly look at RLO and just select only the experimenters in there we can see that that is nearly 20,000 DPS and 170,000 hit points. It's a huge amount of firepower and resilience, and with all these anti-air units to defend it, even Bream's horde of gunships is going to have a hard time stopping it. Now, it's such a cinematic shot of the Cybran XB stalking forward there, very pretty if you're the sort of person who likes the look of a Cybran XP. Bream sends a little gunship raid down to deal with T-Cop's base, what little he has of it, and he's working on this T3 mechs. I'd have gone for the Pigeons first. Very, very rude com complains T-Cop, and, you know, if, if I were in his position, I would consider it to be pretty rude. Here they come. I can't stop it, you idiot, roars Chubbin. I'm loving this sort. But Bream might just be in a position to stop it because the anti-air is all just a little bit out of position and these gunships are raining fire down on the monkeys. But the anti-air creeps forward. AA, says Chubbin, and just starts screaming, ah, instead. He's wisely retreated his com to the water. And the gunships are getting through it. One of the monkeys goes down. But Bream pulls away, finding he hasn't got quite enough to take out the rest of the force. Meanwhile, these little raiding gunships down here, they've noted that there's a big pigeon up here and they're trying to take it out. Teacup is building them as fast as he can, but he's still trying to get to that teleporter with its vast power requirements. And this spam force from Chubbin is getting monkeyed. Chubbin pings the gunships, but are there enough of it to do anything? If Chubbin focuses the AA, like just sets all these to target priority AA and charges in into there, he might, he just might be able to get enough clearance for those gunships from Bream to do their work, but it doesn't feel like it's going to be super successful, and somehow, despite their pitiful eco, despite the fact that they've been nuked repeatedly, their build capacity has gone up in smoke time and time again, 
Arvalo has managed to get out yet another monkey. He's really doubling down on huh, going ape about it. Something, something, go bananas, make a pun, if you will. That would be funnier if one of these players were yellow, but none of them are. So you're just going to have to imagine, I don't know, blue bananas. And blue bananas don't seem very appetising, do they? There was actually a study done about that, about how food that was coloured unnatural colours, even if the taste was theoretically the same, tasted significantly different to whoever was eating it. But we have to focus back here. This monkey has come up and smashed... Chubbin's attempt to build an air grid. This monkey is sneaking through the water and it pops out, but that's a lot of ravages. That's a lot of gunships. And Teacop teleports in. Boom. Dream just takes him out. Teacop gets nothing done. Teacop is dead. Poor old Teacop. And this monkey also, I feel it could have pushed out of the water, or but the water wasn't deep enough for it to hide again. And so this line of ravages, supported by the fire from these Razaseyus, was able to take it down. Could that have been the last desperate gasp for the Cold team? Well, not quite. There's still monkeys sneaking around here. And there's still a Mega, though the Mega is badly damaged. Chubbin has a chicken coming up, and in come the gunships from Bream, and all the AA's dead now for Arlo and the Cold team. So this monkey's only hope, along with this monkey's only hope, is to hide in the water. Now if I were Bream, I would be building torp bombers now. I've got enough gunships to kill the monkeys if they're out of the water, so I need gunships to kill the monkeys if they're in the water. Meanwhile, I've also got gunships if I'm Bream, messing around, popping eco belonging to Arlo down here. And that monkey we mentioned earlier is coming up, and it's coming almost unopposed into Chubbin's base, and Chubbin is about to lose some of his eco. The ping goes down here, these monkeys get all sneaky. And in comes the monkey, the last vestiges of Chubbin's base are being blown apart by this monkey lord, and in the end, these gunships from Green will eat their way through it, but not before there isn't any base for Chubbin left. They're gonna take over the map and you will lose, Bellows Chubbin. Ha ha! And that would be pretty funny if it happened. Do you think that somehow, despite this vast eco differential, and you'll note that there's still a factor of, what, seven or eight ahead, but they have managed to halve Hot Team's eco with this little raid. Somehow... RLO is still in it, and out pop these two monkeys from the water. There are vast banks of ravagers here, and they're working their way very quickly through the monkeys. One of them goes down. The other monkey's focusing on T1PD, which feels like the wrong thing. It should be blowing up these P-Gens, and it should be blowing up that P-Gen first, and it is getting damage done, but the two monkeys both die. And although he's lost some eco, Dream is fine and he's now got two dukes up and firing and his com is still alive but watch this, watch this, is this a sneaky monkey in the water he doesn't know about, he can't know about that, otherwise he wouldn't still be standing there and sure he's got a shield, he's under a shield, he's got a big heap of ravages, you're not even watching the map bellows chubbing, pinging the monkey and he's probably right, the monkey pops out of the water. It fires on Bream, but the shield pops up before Bream's personal shield goes down, and Bream tries running. He's got a gunship on it, but it's too late, and boom, the monkey pops Bream, leaving it all to be inherited by Chubbin, and suddenly... And that's taken out their power. Ah, but there we go, we get it back. That was just an artefact of the transport. Transport? Transfer. But Chubbin is not happy and Chubbin resigns. And somehow, despite being 10 to 1 eco down, despite having lost three quarters of the map and having two out of three of their bases nuked, three out of three by the end, somehow Code Team managed to win that game. Return to Monkey indeed. If those monkeys weren't the MVPs of the match, I don't know what was. Do you think 
that Chubbin had enough to save the day after Bream's unceremonious ejection. I mean, he still had quite a bit of eco, especially compared to the other team, though he didn't have half as much reclaim as Cole's team had to eat down here, which must have been what was fueling most of their shenanigans. If we look at reclaim, look at that. Cole's team had more than 100,000 reclaim, more than Hot Team, and the total mass wasn't that far different? Okay, 250,000, but when the figures are at the level of 1.1 million, that's only a moderate difference as opposed to a really huge difference. And Bream, Bream should definitely have produced some land XPs if only to defend with that huge eco he had. Tell me what you thought about that in the comments below. While you're down there, don't forget to like, subscribe, and obey. I'm the Commissar. I will see you next time.